Hello and welcome to this Stitch Along with me, Natasha, from the London Embroidery School. I hope you're well and that it is a good day for you wherever you're joining us from. Today I'm going to be working on some Valentino roses, which I have made for you guys before. It's one of our free classes. Um, and so if you want to join in and make your own, you can do that. Or if you're feeling inspired afterwards and you want to head over there and try it out for yourself, then please do so. Just head to our website and all that you will need will be there. You can, there's no kits required for it. You can just start with hopefully some things that you will already have at home. So, um, yeah, nothing to stop you really. They end up looking a little bit like this. This is one of our traditional ones that is in a chiffon. I've also got a couple of other little examples here. I've got one that I did in lace. I've also got one over here that I did in denim. And today I thought, how can I make this different? And I went and I looked in my box of bricks and I was like, what can I do to make this exciting? What can I try out that the team will want to know about whether it works or not in Valentino Roses. And lo and behold, there was this uh, sequin fabric that I had left over from, oh, too many years ago now, but we won't uh, harp on about that. And I was like, do you know what? Let's see if it works in sequins. So I'm going to make a sequined Valentino Rose today. As I say, I haven't done this before. Don't know if entirely it's going to work. I have a feeling that it's going to be a little bit chunkier than our, you know, lovely, delicate little um, chiffon one here. As it is obviously a lot thicker fabric, but you don't know unless you try. So, ah, oh, thanks for all of you guys joining me. I hope you're having a good day and thanks for all of you who are waving. That's really sweet of you. So yeah, that's my plan. Now, I... For those of you who've joined me before, today is a little bit different for me as well. It is raining where I am and I hope that it's not too bad on the audio for you guys. I am wearing a mic, um, so fingers crossed. Perhaps could, could anybody give me a little thumbs up if you can hear me okay? If the audio is terrible, I'll perhaps try and relocate or something. But um, yeah, let me know what you think, if it sounds okay. Uh, the lighting will also be a little bit different. You joined me today from my summer house. I know. How bougie am I? Um, it's not mine, but uh, you do join me from a slightly different location to where I normally um, do our live videos from. So if things do look a little bit different, that will be why. Now, full disclosure, I have already made a few of my petals to get started with, because I always think that um, you guys didn't really tune in to watch me making the petals. That bit's not quite so exciting, but I'll do one with you, just in case anyone is stitching along with me today. So I've just got my thread here, and I'm popping a little knot in the end. I've got a single thread on a size 10 embroidery needle. also got one of my flat pieces of fabric here. The dimensions of this and the draft are available on our website if you want to check that out to join in. But you can just make your own as well. Um, you just need to draw two parallel lines which are six centimeters long each, 4.5 centimeters away from one another and round the ends off in a semicircle. Hi to all of you saying hello, it's lovely to have you join me. Let me know if you've got any questions as I go along as well. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Doesn't have to be about Valentino roses as well, just probably embroidery related, I guess. Um, yeah, or anything you want to tell me equally. Um, I'm always interested to know about you guys and it's always lovely to find out you know, where you're joining me from. Um, what you've been making recently, whatever you fancy. So for the moment, what I've done with my flat piece of fabric is fold it long ways so that the two halves are together. Can you see that? And I'm just putting a very rough running stitch around the edge, a couple of millimetres in from that edge so that um, they are joined together and I have a smooth, what will be a petal. 
It is absolutely hammering it down here. I hope you guys can still hear me. Do let me know if you can. Okay. Knot at the end, tie it off. And we can carry on. So first off, what I'm going to do is to make the centre, I need to roll in the first petal. So that I've got a nice tight little bud shape. A little bit like so. And holding that tightly, I'm just going to start stitching through my fabric. To hold that all in place. And anchor it to the base fabric. I am using a denim base today just because I've got my other ones on this one already and so I'm going to add to my other experiments what have you guys been making recently have you managed to join in with any of our online classes are you new to the London Embroidery School or are you a seasoned regular? These Valentino roses are part of the very first class that we launched, um, which was at the start of all this COVID business. Um, and that's why we've got it up as this free resource that people can use just to try and a little something to do at home that hopefully you can get started with if you want to join in. Off the back of that we started the Val Rose challenge which is still going so if you decide to make one do tag us in your make um, using the hashtag Val Rose challenge I will be tagging this one in when it's done so you guys can have a look. With the centre, I do like to come up through the centre and go back down and that just helps to sort of anchor it down and stop it from standing up too proud, which is often a little bit of a problem with um, these Valentino roses. Like if you look at this little one here, the centre sits up a little bit higher, so we just pull it down so it doesn't look like too much of a tower out of the centre. getting myself a new thread here where are you joining me from today I'm always inspired to know where it is you are situated today what time is it there that's always a fun one because I'm always curious When we first launched this class, we were really like absolutely bowled over by how many people joined in and just how many Val Rose Challenge um, hashtags have been used, all the photos that were shared. We've got a whole highlights section on our website, which is all about your guys' makes and things that you have achieved. So um, yeah, if you fancy joining the ranks of our lovely other makers, then that is the place to go. And if you tag us in your photos, then we will be 
Um, we will happily also share your work into the ranks. It's, uh, yeah, it's always a joy to see. Right, so got my first petal on. Now to start to add. It's where to decide to put the next petal is always one of the tricky decisions. So I think I'm going to go starting around this side, facing the raw edge inwards. That's just going to allow us to hide all of our working as we go around. The little semicircles at the end of the draft make these two sort of smooth curves on either end of the petals and that means that we get a really nice smooth curve at the start and finish of each petal. And because we've folded it in half, it sort of goes quite round, giving us that fullness to the petals, which is also a really nice effect. I am somewhat surprisingly using a purple thread today which has nothing to do with any of the colours that I'm working in, but all of our workings should get covered over as we complete the piece. So that shouldn't matter and it should all disappear. Do let me know if I'm getting overexcited and uh, losing the frame. I'm just going to pull you back a little bit. So I can see we've got someone from Chicago, someone from India, someone from South London. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, if you don't already know about the London Embroidery School, then um, you may not know if that we have a giveaway going on at the moment. We just last week reached 15,000 followers on um, Instagram and we got our first thousand followers on our new shiny YouTube channel, which we're all very excited about. So to celebrate those two things, we decided to do a giveaway and we have 10 embroidery related bundle prizes for you guys to win. That competition is still open and will remain open until 12 p.m. on Friday, this coming Friday, and that is UK time. Um, so get your entries in if you want to be in with the chance to win. We have a highlight section up on our Instagram homepage which has all of the bundles in it if you want to check out what you can win, but there's loads of embroidery threads on there, there's um, machine embroidery king cones, there's a slate frame, there's little presentation frames, there is cross stitch fabrics, there's uh, tapestry wools, there's loads of lovely things to check out and to win. Um, and there's 10 of them, so you've got like quite reasonable chances, I think. It's better than the lottery, basically. Um, so all you need to do is to head over to the original post, which is a video on our feed. Um, you'll see it's got 15,000 followers on it. Um, not that we're bragging, but we are excited about it. And you just need to uh, like the post. You need to follow us um, and you need to tag a friend. So one, uh, one tag per comment and you can tag as many friends in as you like um, and each 
person you tag will get you another entry. So tag away, share the love, and um, we will be contacting 10 of you wonderful people to give you some goodies. Again, that's been going really well and we've been just so, so pleased with how many people have got involved. So yeah, thanks again for that, guys. We will be contacting people by direct message for who has won and uh, obviously to try and get your addresses and stuff so we can send you your goodies if you are one of our lucky winners. So do look out for that. We'll have contacted everyone by next Monday, which is the 31st of August. So yeah, fingers crossed for you. Also, as tomorrow is Friday. We like to launch our new classes on Friday and we do have a new class for you going up tomorrow which is going to be um, a, a brand new type of class for us. Um, so little sneak peek for you guys joining me today but it's going to be a lace jewellery class which looks a little bit like a little bit like so. They're super cute. Little kits. And um, yeah, we really hope that you guys are going to enjoy these as well. Again, they're not, they're not tricky to make at all. Um, they're just a little bit fiddly. So yeah, we're super excited to get that out. But that's a secret. Don't tell anyone. I'm not really supposed to have told you that today. But um, never mind. <gasps> just keep it between us, yeah? So I'm just working my way around the rows each time, tucking in all the raw edges as I go. This one in the sequence is filling out really quite fast, because obviously the sequins make it a lot chunkier. So I don't know how many petals I'll actually get onto this one, but we'll see all an experiment. So coming around here, it's a little bit more tough on your fingers with this um, sequined fabric. So you're always kind of looking to try and drop the needle down into one of the gaps in the sequins and as it's double layered it is quite um, firm. Also as I'm working on a denim base that itself is also reasonably thick but does mean it's nice and sturdy. And, and we got our you getting that little bit of sparkle coming through there guys it's starting to come along getting some sparkle okay new petal I think I'm going to bring this one back a little bit so that the crossover is a little bit more elegant. Um, I think if I if I start from here, we're going to start and finish in the same place again, and it starts to look a bit one-sided. So I'm going to take it back a little bit. Every time you start a new petal, because we're working around from the centre, we make ourselves a slightly longer path every time. So that does mean that the uh, positioning of each petal is going to be different every time. So it's just about looking at it and deciding what's going to be the nicest and then going with that. It's 
just going to end off this thread quickly as it is getting quite short. Will this end up being a brooch? Um, possibly. I mean, with these, you can do whatever you like with them, really. I think they're so sturdy um, that they're, you know, really great for a, a whole host of other little outcomes. I mean, this one in the sequins really will have some jazz. So it could make a wonderful little brooch. You just need to tuck under the outside edges so you cut yourself a small little um, border and um, if you cut yourself a little border of a few millimeters then you can tuck that underneath so a little bit like on this one here you just need to tuck that under and stitch around we do have a pro tip on our YouTube channel about tucking under to make your embroideries freestanding so if that's something that you're interested in doing that is definitely worth checking out because that should really help you in getting a nice smart finish and getting rid of those raw edges on your piece and it's one of those things that really takes your embroidery from you know, looking like something homemade that you can you know are really proud of to something that looks really smart and that you can pass off as professional Because let's face it, we all want that kind of like, oh, where did you get that? And uh, there is definitely a certain satisfaction of saying, oh, well, I made this. So still working my way around the edge here. This is just starting to tighten. You can see it starts to turn. And as I get this, this edge coming over, that just helps to start to close the rows. I'm going to say this is petal number four, so this one has grown very fast. By comparison to the others, I think there's maybe eight in this one. Yeah, and so aside from my freestanding one here, all of my choices of uh, Valentino Rose experiments have all been with quite chunky fabrics. I think it's just because the, the Valentino Roses traditionally would be done in either an organza or a tulle. Um, so obviously very lightweight and very thin. Um, so we're quite well versed with what that looks like. Um, so when I like to try these things out for you guys, see how they go, see if it works, then um, it does tend to be the heavier end of things. Because like, we know this looks good. <laughs> we already knew that before we started. Okay, maybe, maybe one more. I'm thinking. Yeah, because we're a little bit lopsided at the moment. so sparkly so I'm thinking if we go from around here yeah over to that side and then if this is the last one which I think it probably will be otherwise we are gonna get quite big um, we need to really focus this time on tucking in the edges because this will be our outermost layer so 
really want to try and get in underneath that previous layer with the outside edge. I might come back to this end here just to re-secure the end of this petal once we've got a few stitches in. Because as much as we want to tuck the raw edge in, we also don't want it to peek out when it is tucked in, if you see what I mean. Okay. Let's come in and around. Getting in real tight, real close. going to just finish this thread quickly because that's also getting a little bit short and there's no point in trying to work with a too short thread it affects your tension too much doesn't give you a good finish we don't need that our work deserves better than that Oh, thank you guys. Thanks to all of you who are waving and sending me nice little emojis. It really does help to encourage us on. Um, I did another Tamba stitch along, I want to say a week before last. I feel like it was really recent, but it's probably not that recent. Um, but that was also really good fun. And we hadn't done one for a little while uh, before that. We'd had a bit of a break. So it was really nice to come back to you guys and see the enthusiasm for it. So that's why we thought, do you know what? We should definitely do another one today. Because it's always so nice to hear from you guys and to hear what you're up to. Hopefully it's a, a bit of a, a circle of inspiration because you guys inspire us to do new things and to make new things that hopefully inspire you to get joined in too. So... Yeah. I'm excited to show you finished pictures of this one. I think it's going to come across great in photos. You can never have too much sparkle in my opinion. And I mean, I know I am terribly biased. I'll be the first to say that. I love embroidery, I love sequins and sparkly things. It's not really a surprise that I ended up doing what I'm doing um, for a living, given that that is my uh, opinion on the matter. But nonetheless, here we are. Making sparkly things. In some ways, I wish this sequin fabric was more sparkly. The sequins themselves are sort of quite matte and they're quite... Um, sort of a gunmetal colour and finish. So, yeah, I sort of wish they were a bit more shiny, but nonetheless, I'm sure they will do the job. So, um... Thank you very much, uh, Ros J Designs. Uh, will you be doing any more? Yes, we have lots more online classes planned. There's loads on our website. So if you have been enjoying this class um, and you've already tried out the Valentino roses, we have got a lot of other silk flower making um, classes on there if that is your jam. Um, we've got our organdy roses class, which looks a little bit like like this one here, sort of big open sort of cabbage style roses, really, um, really luxurious. We've also got our little cute 
chiffon roses class that's up there too really soft and fluid they're great on garments we have our blooming peonies in the satin a little bit flatter nice and sturdy we also have the structural flowers this one's our yellow version i also have a lovely um sort of burgundy aubergine colored one here all of these are available on our website if you fancy checking them out if you want to make some more flowers or if flowers aren't your thing there's lots of other classes on there for other different um, specialist embroidery techniques so things like monogramming and we've got a couple of gold work classes up now um, if you're interested in monogramming the first part of the monogramming series is also a free class so another good one to check out if you just want to get started if you're not sure if embroidery is in fact your thing or not um, let us you know try it out with us basically and you can try us out and see if you like us too with those free classes um, and if you like our style then we have got more things to offer you and hopefully teach you some new skills which I think we could all learn some new skills never stop learning and that is all part of the joy of making things again in my opinion so really tucking that end in there I want that to look nice and tidy and give that a little squidge that is my little Valentino rose done in our sequin fabric I'm just gonna pop him out of the frame so I can move him around a little bit There we go. What do you think, guys? Which one's your favourite? And have you got any more things that you would like to see me test out? If you've got an idea for something, but you're not sure if it will work as a Valentino rose, let me know. If you've asked any questions today that I didn't get to, um, really sorry, and uh, do direct message us as well. I will answer any questions that you um, want to know things about. With embroidery, yeah, do direct message us. It'll only be because I was looking at the screen and I was stitching, so sorry about that. Um, but yes, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you've enjoyed this. I think that's probably, I'm gonna count that as a success. I'd make another one. Uh, you guys also seem to be enjoying the second one, so yeah, great, a winner. Do pop back in tomorrow and see uh, our new class launch. I am excited to share that with you guys and I think it's going to be a really nice one because it's something that uh, in particular if you you know want to gift it to somebody special um, then you know it's something that will travel in the post really well particularly if you can't see them at the moment given the current situation all that sort of thing or if they're just really far away then it's a really nice like handmade gift that you guys uh, could potentially share with somebody special or just make it for yourself because you are somebody special too so yeah that's all from me for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and do check out our YouTube channel for any of our other like pro tips and things that might just help you along with your stitching. Thanks a lot. <laughs>